All right, let's talk about wrestling, folks. Uh, unfortunately, I did not come up with a start bench or cut for WWE. I apologize. But since we're in the new year, okay. we're going to go by favorite wrestling moment, and we're going to try to wrap this up as quickly as possible because I want to talk about some NFL stuff. So, um, Leaf, I'm going to let you go first. What's your favorite wrestling moment? Favorite wrestling moment of the year? No, no, any moment that. in time. Oh, any moment in time. Oh, wow. Um, oh, damn. Oh, wow. That, that's a good ass question. That is a good ass question. Um, I I gotta say, I was uh, I was pretty all in. The Attitude Era, um, obviously had some some moments, uh, for sure. But the Ruthless Aggression Era had a moment, um, in time that stuck with me. Um, the night that uh, uh Brock Lesnar suplexed the Big Show off the top rope and the ring imploded. Oh, I thought, I, I, honest to God, I didn't. I thought that that was probably the most one. Uh, I thought it was scripted, but I didn't think the ring collapsing was supposed to be scripted. I like, I, I was like, wait, hold the hell up, because Big Show, mind you, Big Show at that time, five hundred plus, easy. Yeah. So him getting on the top turnbuckle, just to begin with. Was just like was wait, hold fantastic. up! I know they ain't about to do what I was about to do. I'm like, yeah. that from that moment on, I never ever in my life, like that's when I knew Brock Lesnar was solidified. I was like, yeah, I, yes. I, 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 was, I said, listen, listen, it is not a, there is not a soul on this planet that Brock Lesnar can't physically, and yeah. doing bodily harm on, bro. Like I'm telling bodily you, bro, like, harm is crazy, but and, and, right. and bodily harm. I'm, I'm telling <laughs> you, but listen, uh, bro, when I seen that. The episode went straight off right after that because um mm-hmm. it was Taz that, that 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 gave the holy shit and, and I think uh Mike Kyoto was in the ring and he fell and then they was bringing people out or whatever because they I guess they had to fix the ring or whatever but um they said Brock Lesnar might have had uh, they what they was bringing people out for what um all after the fact that I learned is that they, Brock Lesnar might have had a herniated disc after that. He might have had a herniated disc after that. It turns out he was fine. He just maybe had a like a rib injury or something like that. And then I think a couple of days later, uh, with that same rib injury, he messed around at F five, uh, the big show at, at a um at an event um at a live show, and then got cost the title um uh, um a Paul Heyman had turned on him and whatever. But that was probably the one of the most what the hell moments that I ever seen. Um obviously the Mick Foley off the top of the cage come to mind. But um that moment right there, I don't think a lot of people bring that moment up. That was the moment where I was just like, yo, these niggas trying to kill each other kill each other, bro. What the hell? I'm mm-hmm. like, man, man, that was a moment right yeah. there, man. I, but I, I have to go with Big Show. Uh, um, suplex off the top of the turnbuckle in the ring. That that was out of style. That's the first time I ever seen anything like that. I ain't think I ever seen it. Uh, they tried to duplicate it again years later, but um, with with a oh with the Braun Strowman. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but it wasn't the same. It was it didn't get the same raw. That was a raw from the crowd, bro. When yeah, when yeah. they did that, bro, that was out of line. But all right, Trey, what's your favorite wrestling moment of all time? Favorite wrestling moment. Mm. I would have to say probably when hold on, hold on, let me Yeah, my favorite wrestling moment was when uh probably when John Cena his first night on Raw. Oh, when he uh, the draft Ooh, 05. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when he was the first round, when he was the first pick in the draft, and everybody was like, man, who's who's gonna who's who's the number one pick in the draft? Who's the number one pick? Yeah, yeah, and you heard the theme song and stuff. Yeah, and then Jim John Ross the was like, What the hell? pick in any draft? I'm hot, that's my hot take. All right. And they was like, and they was like, and I remember he was like, what? They was still, like, I, what? I still, the hell? I still, the Thugonomics era, I still love to this day, Brian. Bro, on. that entrance, I'm telling you, PSP, that in, Trey is on to something. That entrance on when he when we found out he was the number one draft pick, 
that was probably the most that that with how electrifying that cl- that crowd was. That's probably the uh, one of the only times John Cena outside of the two thousand eight entrance in the Royal Rumble, uh, yes. Royal Rumble. That's mm-hmm. probably the only time other than that where he in terms of pop was yeah. as as electrifying as like The Rock. Oh yeah, by far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can say that. All right, so, uh, casual. Yeah. I'm gonna let you go. What's your favorite wrestling moment? I say I say this, and John Cena's my goat, but um. I say this because Randy Orton, I hated him to like, like to to, to my core. I, ah, I love him. Randy. In two thousand, no, 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 not in two thousand seven. And remember in two thousand seven when the storyline was he tore um, John Cena's um, uh, pictorial off the bone, mm-hmm. right, right, and he ended up getting mm-hmm. he ended up getting granted the WWE Championship. My mm-hmm. favorite moment is that No Mercy um, pay per view. When he mm-hmm. lost it to Triple H, and, and got it back, it back that same right night. that same night. Mm-hmm. That, that I when I tell you that is like the most hillish shit I've ever seen. It it, it was it definitely was that was hillish. so disgusting. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> that was so disgusting. It was my, it was hill worthy, bro. Listen, yeah, that, I, I put it to you this way, bro. If you could get a title back from Triple H in, in less than twenty four hours, bro, like you, you kind of solidify. Because Triple and H then, during uh, the two thousands, bro, like it was hard to get a title off of him at any point of that decade. Bro. But two thousand seven <laughs> was Randy. Two thousand seven was Randy Orton's year. But yeah, it was. Uh, oh, yeah, heart, absolutely. I want to throw. I want to throw an honorable mention. Um, twenty ten, and I believe it's Unforgiven. They were in a scramble match, I believe, for the World Heavyweight or the WWE Championship. And a bearded edge looked like a fucking caveman mm. comes out and wins the entire and wins the entire thing. Mm. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. No. All right, champ. All right, I'm gonna go back, way back. <laughs> I'm go way back. Most memorable wrestling moment is when the Montreal screw job happened. Oh, you mother effer! Ooh. Because that was the turning point for so many things. Like during that time, we didn't even know during that time, you gotta think about the effects that the Montreal screw job had on the wrestling world. Leading oh, yeah, up to yeah. that, we yeah. didn't even know this big I didn't know Vince McMahon was the boss. You know, there was no <laughs> there was no internet back then. Yeah, nobody right. knew it. The only way Nobody you knew it is by looking through a magazine, bro. Like yeah, the, the only way you knew it is by reading Wrestler's Digest and stuff like that. Yeah. But we didn't know he was the boss. And then, you know, he came out with the Brett screw Brett rule and that interview, and it turned Vince McMahon into a heel and springboarded arguably the greatest rivalry in history. And then it led up to the next. And if I don't know if anybody noticed, but the very next year when The Rock turned heel, he redid the Montreal yes, screw job, screw job yeah. Uh, yeah, in order to turn mankind. the rock yeah. heel. So without that, the there's no Rock versus Stone Cold heel moment in 1999 in WrestleMania, in WrestleMania 15. 15. Yeah. Right. So, and then not to mention that was kind of the beginning of the end of WCW as well, because once they got Bret Hart and really didn't do anything with them, that was pretty much the beginning of the end for the WCW. Sure it was like, hey, it was the end three years ago. We just didn't know it at that point. Right. And, uh, it was on bar time. Yeah, they definitely was. And unfortunately, during that my time. Thing, my thing with Brett was he wants to blame Goldberg for his demise, like for him not wrestling anymore. But what people don't know is he wrestled like three times after that incident. I mean, well, yeah, he did, but at the same time, it wasn't the high contact matches outside of that. When when Goldberg kicked him in the head, that was pretty much the like the end. Like the other matches he had after that was kind of gimmicky. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like so so you didn't get the Bret Hart, the excellence of execution, yeah. Bret Hart. You got Bret Hart on the on the back. He was bro, when they I knew it was going south for him is when they did this thing with him and Goldberg. Goldberg comes in the ring, right? Uh-huh. And he comes there, he just spears the hell out of him. And then he had spears him into the ground. Yeah. And he, yeah, and, yeah, Goldberg is knocked out. They're like, what the world? And then he had the metal plate. He yeah. pulls his shirt off. He had the metal plate on. <laughs> Yeah. This, this, I no, hated no. this nigga. 
Hold on, hold on. I'm a, I'm a solo screen. I'm a solo screen right here. <laughs> bro, he was the worst, bro. You hated Edge with the beard, bro. I hated Edge it, without bearded, the beard. Caveman Edge was so he was dirty, bro. That nigga was dirty, bro. I could, Edge, yeah, I could. Bro, he was with, he was with Vicky Guerrero. Vicky that Guerrero, was dirty. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that was. Yeah. We, we, we won't go there, but uh, to, <laughs> let's 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 let what you, what you got, PSC, man. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get into mine in just a, se- a second, but interesting, champ. You brought up the Montreal screw job, Vince. I was watching the Shawn Michaels documentary. Love the A and E documentaries, legend. They only did the reason why they wanted to screw Brett because that was Brett's last match before he head on to the WCW, and so they wanted uh, Vince took the blame for it. Shawn knew about it, and then when Brett approached Vince, one punch. Vince fell on his ass just like that, man. But that was an interesting. That was a great, um, interesting moment. And the rivalry between Brett and Sean. I mean, it also turned personal as well. Not just yeah. in the ring, but outside yeah. the ring. Oh yeah, sure did. Yeah. But you want to know the irony of? You want to know the irony of he, him of Vince McMahon saying that he didn't want he didn't want to risk Bret Hart taking right. the WWE title to Nitro when we all know that oh. Brett Hart has never done that to Vince. What's so ironic about that is he did that to WCW six years earlier when Ric Flair came. Right, mm, He bought sure the did. WCW title with him when Bobby Heenan brought him out and say, this is the real world champion. Right. So, I mean, you're trying to make sure the same thing. And we all knew. And if you look back on it, Vince... Bret Hart wouldn't have dared did that to Vince McMahon. No, 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 he wouldn't have. But, 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 champ, you got to remember, uh, Alundra Blaze had left with the uh, women's title from WWE. Yes, I, I'm doing, glad you brought that up. Trash on television, she doing on television. She yeah. doing in the trash. So Vince had that on his mind, and was basically like. I can't let this happen to me because he remember how it happened to him. Remember the Ric Flair thing that you talked about with him bringing the title there? That yeah. happened before that. And then I guess uh, Alundra Blaze bringing a woman's title to WCW was kind of like a reverse, slap, like a slap me and I slap you back type of thing because Eric Bischoff had called Alundra up. He, you know, She was like, yo, I got this title. And he was like, oh, word, bring it. It was like, yo, bring bring it on TV. And then that's how I got ended up getting thrown into the trash. Um, but if you so, really think about it, look how Bret Bret Hart didn't even want to leave the dub, didn't even want to sure leave didn't. the WWE. Sure so like, there's no Brett, doubt in my mind that he wouldn't have did. did Brett, there, there Brett, was Brett, was, Brett was all tradition. Yeah, Brett, yeah, was Brett Hart wouldn't have dared did that to Vince. I no. mean, I don't really think that for a second. And no. I'm not even in the wrestling business, but that's how loyal he was. I know for a fact that. Brett wouldn't have did that. No, but Brett he was he was that. he was a consummate professional. There's no yeah, all all time. He just didn't like Shawn Michaels. No, he didn't. But yeah. not a lot of people like Shawn Michaels at that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shawn, not Michael, a lot of Shawn Michaels like in the nineties, bro. Of, like the Undertaker even though. said, bro. Like he was like, "Yo, bro, listen. Uh, in the ring, it's nobody I'd rather be with." But back then, I wouldn't. If he was on fire, man, I wouldn't throw ice cold water on him to put.